Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for this video. I'm talking today about how I stay cool in hot weather. Why are we talking about this today? Because we are in the middle of a crazy, ridiculous, weeks-long heat wave here in Wyoming where I'm currently at. It's so hot! It gets hot here once in a while in the summer, but it's usually, you know, not too, too bad. We are in like a multi-week, middle of a multi-week uh, heat wave that is like at least low 90s into low 100s every day. Uh, nighttime temperature is sometimes so warm you don't even get under the covers. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, now, now, if I was in Arizona or Texas or, you know, some other places, I'd expect this. It doesn't usually do that here. We usually have a, you know, a couple short heat waves, but this is like crazy. So I thought it was a perfect time to talk about what I do to try and stay cool, uh, or at least to survive during heat in summer. Uh, so I'm going to cover today my approaches. These are kind of tried and true things that I know for a fact work because I use them. They, you, you'll come across some novel ideas on the internet and, you know, they may or may not work or they probably don't work like, you know, you're hoping. Uh, so, but anyways, the, these are things that I actually know work, so I'm only covering things that I actually use. Uh, this isn't like a comprehensive, um, you know, full-blown, every, everything you ever need to know video. It's just what I do. And I'm in the middle of it right now. Uh, this, I will mention there, there are some variations between climate. If you're in somewhere that's really humid, you're going to, uh, you know, use some approaches that are different from someone that's really dry. Uh... Northeast Wyoming is fairly dry. It's not as dry as Arizona, for example. Uh, it's definitely a lot more dry than the Northeast, where I'm from originally, or from the Midwest, or the Southeast, or even the Pacific Northwest. So it's, it's fairly dry here, but not as much as, as some other places. And obviously, we're nomads. We like to move with the weather whenever possible. At least most of us. I mean, some people are tied, uh, you know, they're van dwellers, whatever. They're tied to a location for one reason or another, uh, jobs, for example. But... A lot of us try to move with the weather to avoid the worst of the extra temperature extremes anyways, but sometimes you just get stuck. Uh, for example, late April, I was in New Mexico, and a surprise winter storm came through. We tried to figure out how to get out of it. Well, the only way, it was a huge multi-state storm, and the only way we got out of it was to go all the way to Arizona, literally, uh, which was, you know, several hundred miles and then that would have been several hundred miles out of the way for the return up to Wyoming. So it just wasn't feasible. So we just had to hunker down and, and ride it out. Fortunately, it wasn't as bad as, as uh, you know, they talked about. Uh, check the description if you want to see a link to uh, that video, by the way, about that experience. But in the summer, you can go up in elevation. And that makes a big, big difference. Uh, you know, so for example, if we go over to the Bighorn Mountains here, uh, from where I'm at, it's it's about, you know, an hour's drive over to Buffalo, Wyoming. It's from Buffalo up into the Bighorns. Uh, I'm not sure of the elevation of Buffalo off the top of my head. But going up the mountains, uh, you get up to the top, you know, around 10,000 feet. It's usually about 20 degrees cooler. Um, I'm not sure if that would hold 100% true in a heat wave with the sun being intense in the summer. But on average, it's, you know, 15, 20 degrees colder up at the top of the mountains so gaining some elevation is like the easiest thing to do. but sometimes you can't sometimes you're stuck for one reason or another and you just gotta figure out how to deal with the heat so before we get started a quick disclaimer spoiler alert spoiler alert when it's hot and you live in a van it, it, you're gonna be hot i mean it's just that's just the way it is okay um i wish i could tell you you could always be comfortable but you know that's just not how it works and in the winter, when it's cold, you're going to be cold. You can run heat, but you're still going to be cold, right? If it's damp for three days and raining, you're going to be damp. It's just, we're closer to nature in, that, in this lifestyle, and that's just how it is. So when it's hot, you're going to be hot. You're going to know it's hot. All right, so first thing I do, try and park in the shade if possible. Why do I say if possible? Because a lot of us have solar on the roof and can't park in the shade or we won't have electricity. So, you know, that's that's... That's just one of those things you got to make a choice on sometimes. Um, when I started out, I was in a car. I did not have solar. I relied on my engine uh, starting battery to power electronics. And, you know, in that case, I parked in the shade 
all the time, whenever, or at least whenever possible, which was almost all the time. I'd find shade because it made a huge difference. Not just because you're out of the out of the sun, but because the sun coming through the glass is it, a greenhouse effect, of course, and it'll heat up the vehicle, you know, 20, 30 or more degrees above outside. Parking in the shade is important if you're able to do it at all. Uh, if not, consider making your own. Uh, you know, use a canopy or a tarp or a shade cloth or whatever to shield the south side of your vehicle from the sun if you're parked somewhere where you can do that. And I realize you can't do this when you're, you know, doing urban stealth, for example. But if you're boondocking and you can't get out of the shade, you're in the desert or something, or you're, you're, uh, you know, you're in the forest and you can't do it, by all means, you know, look at doing it, running a, a tarp or some shade cloth. That can make a, just getting, just shading that side of the vehicle from the sun can make a real big difference in keeping you comfortable. Uh, secondly, block the windows that are facing the sun, at least. Um, Reflectix is, like, best for this. You can get by with, uh, uh, you know, reflective sunshades. If you have to, use curtains. That's better than nothing. I, I just have curtains in the van, except for my front window. Um, it's not as ideal. It's not as good as Reflectix or something like that. But, um, you know, the truth is, uh, th these windows are hard to... They're weird shapes, so it's going to be hard to fit Reflectix to them, and... I this train this this van's uh you know probably doesn't have much life left in it so I just don't haven't been motivated to get uh get too carried away but if if you're able to do reflectix or something like that that'll be your best bet um, but block the windows that are facing the sun that'll keep the heat from coming through third consider you know look at using a fan for air circulation all right forget the paper fan that doesn't work too good uh you know my current favorite is this nice Ryobi fan. Uh, you know, why did I go with this one? First of all, it's cordless, right? It takes a standard Ryobi 18-volt uh, lithium battery. What's also nice about this is it'll run on either 18-volt uh, battery or on 110. You can plug it right in. Um, so that's nice. This thing works pretty good. You get, you know, five to seven hours out of a um, fully charged standard battery. You can get a little longer out of one of the extended oversized batteries. Uh, 40 bucks at Home Depot, and it works with the tools I've already got, the batteries I've already got from these tools, and my electric's all in the back of the van, so I don't have to worry about running an extra wire up here for a 12 volt uh, to run a fan when I'm in the front. It's got a multi-position head on it, so you can turn it in all kinds of different directions. It's got a hook on it to hang it, you know, so pretty cool. Um, just picked that up for this heat wave, and I'm glad I did. It definitely makes a big difference. The wind blows here a lot, so a lot of times you can get by because the air is moving anyways, but you get a still evening, you're trying to sleep, and it's just, or even a still day, and you're trying to work or whatever, and it's just nasty hot, and if you can get that art, that artificial air circulation going it really helps with cooling next is you gotta have a spray bottle right uh, spray bottle for mist yeah there you go um, aside from just feeling a little better when you spray yourself with some cool air it also helps you cool down this is a dry climate trick though uh, if you're in the the humid areas like where I used to live you know I know you don't want to do spraying more water on yourself. You're already sweating and you're soaked in sweat and it literally never dries all day long. It's nasty. If you're somewhere dry, uh, you know, you can mist yourself down and it, and it basically aids the it basically aids the cooling process the way we already sweat and, and then that helps us to cool. This is basically just aiding that process. You're spraying some cool water on and it evaporates. So that's a handy way to do it in dry climate. Or even better, I was doing this last week. If it's really hot, get your grandkids to spray you with squirt guns. They think it's funny, and it cools you down still. So same effect, and only you don't even have to spray yourself. Your grandkids do it for you. And you have so much fun looking at the grandkids laughing that you, you almost forget you're hot. Fifth, drink lots of water. Um, and, and you may want to intersperse that with some sport drinks like Gatorade or something. So you don't get, uh, you know, your electrolytes out of balance. But definitely plan on drinking a lot of water when it's hot. It, it helps cool you, but it also keeps you from getting dehydrated when you're sweating. And it's very easy if you're in these uh, dry climates where I am right now. Uh, you can you, you sweat a lot in the hot weather, but your skin dries like instantly because it's hot and the climb air is dry. So you don't realize how much water you're losing, how much you're sweating out. So definitely be conscious of that, but drink plenty of water um, to help stay cool and help deal with with uh, heat without get without getting sick. A uh, sixth thing I use is go for a drive somewhere with the air conditioning on high to cool yourself down, or 
you know, take a trip into the store or to the library or to a coffee shop, whatever that's got air conditioning, you know, just half an hour, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, sometimes in the air conditioning, not only does it give you a psychological break, but it also gets you your whole body cooled down so your core temperature is lowered back to where it should be, which allows you to deal with the heat better once you come back out. I mean, it's still going to be hot, but you're not as overheated as you were before you went and cooled down. Number seven, plan physical activities for early in the morning or late in the evening when it is cooler. Uh, that's really important. This heat can be punishing and one of the best ways of dealing with it is to sit still and be calm and relax during the heat of the day and any work you have to do, physical work you have to do, you know, try and do it early or late when it's not as hot. That is uh, important physically to avoid overheating and, and uh, heat related illnesses, but it's also uh, helps psychologically because you're not uh, so miserable. It helps to keep you more comfortable during the worst part of it. All right, number eight, uh, psychological, right? Accept the heat. Um, I know that might sound all, uh, you know, touchy feely type thing, but I'm, I'm serious uh, about it. If you can, in your mind, say, okay, this is what it is. I can't do anything about it. I'm not able to escape this right now. This is something I have to deal with. So, and, and try and accept it. It, it is, you know, I mean, if, if you're feeling miserable about it all the time, and you're stressed out about it, complaining about it, you're going to be much more upset and aggravated than if you can, you know, try and accept it. So, you know, try and accept it. It's, it's hot. So feel the heat, you know, and remember that you're not freezing, you know. Um, I know it's still too hot sometimes, but... It helps if you try and keep a positive attitude about it as much as possible, and and use the other things, the other seven things, to try and uh, you know try and manage it as best as possible. All right. So in conclusion, um, heat, heat is unavoidable in van life, you know, or or the nomad life. Sometimes you're going to be places that are hot. Uh, you know, you, you can, we we try often try to many of us try to move with the weather, and that helps. But like this heat wave right now is gripping like a huge area and we're, you know, there's areas in Montana north of us and in uh, South Dakota, North Dakota going east that are even hotter than we're at. Uh, and that doesn't count the southwest that's just been scorching with like 120 degree temperatures lately. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's a large system and you can't get away from it. Uh, sometimes or you can't get up into the mountains or whatever and so you're just stuck dealing with it so it's it, but it, it happens so it's an unavoidable part of van life we live in vans i know we're still in motor modern motor vehicles etc but we live closer to nature than your average person in the developed world who's living in a, a sticks and bricks residence in a city uh or even in a rural area but we're, we're closer to the land what this means is we're much more attuned to things like weather because when it's hot we know it's hot and we're going to feel it when it's cold we know it's cold you know it, we, that's that's just part of the lifestyle is you're closer to nature on balance overall i think that's a good thing i i enjoy that and appreciate that but you know yes there are times when it's 100 degrees and the sun's beating down and you look and say oh my gosh we got six more hours till it starts to cool down and you're like, a little air conditioning would be nice, right? Uh, but it is what it is, right? Um, it, 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 that's a trade-off I'm willing to make. So these eight strategies I've shared here anyways, they work for me. They're things I do use, uh, things that I encourage you to try out if you haven't already. You know, maybe you have some other strategies of your own that work for that work as well. But if you're, if you're you know, new to van life or new to life on the road or, or you're even getting ready to do it, these are some things you can you can probably will want to at least adopt these strategies even if you if you adopt some others as well these are things that are pretty uh you know reliable that are going to help you stay comfortable and safe or as comfortable as possible and safe while you're living in a vehicle and you're in a stuck in a heat wave or in a hot spell um so that's it for this video thanks everybody for watching hope you found it helpful uh you know if you're not already subscribed please consider hitting that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when i upload new videos and uh you know thanks again for watching everybody we'll see you in the next video